Thank you everybody for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts. And I wanted to share with you a series of dreams that I had. And part of the reason why I feel so compelled to analyze and overanalyze things is it's basically I'm trying to figure out the dreams that have come to me um, going back to 1985, I believe. It could have been 84, but I think it was 85 it was the first time I had a dream um, about things that could happen and it felt like it was kind of a a warning dream and I'll stay right off the bat that I do believe that there are multiple timelines available to us that we could jump into other timelines. Um, those of you that are familiar with quantum physics and, and you know the breaking science that we're now learning about the nature of reality um, there is the thought that there is all these parallel timelines possible because we live in a multi-dimensional universe with just a myriad of different possibilities in front of us and it's all up to us you know to shift our focus to the right areas and to change you know potentially negative outcomes into positive ones um, but these dreams were very very vivid and very clear and they showed the same thing happening over the years. And I just got different glimpses of it um, from, I believe, slightly different perspectives uh, of what could happen. And so when I first had the dream, it was in my first apartment. Um, and it was 84, 85-ish. And I was living in Connecticut. And the thing that really hit me was it felt like I jumped 30, 40 years in the future. It was a, a much m more advanced um, way of life, but not Jetsons-ish or anything, but just things were different than they were in the 80s, <laughs> which obviously they are now. Um... The thing that hit me about this, as I try to get to the right picture, the first thing that hit me was the fact that there were <clears throat> these things in the sky and they just monitored everybody. And to me, they looked like giant eyes. They were roundish. Um, it sort of looked a lot like this picture. Um, and they just basically watched everything that everybody did every move that everybody made was being monitored and was watched and to me they looked a lot like this they were basically eyes in the sky and that's what i felt they were so they were a means to watch us now i don't know if what type of technology this was or even if it was technology you know and in, in some sense they almost felt kind of alive in my dream but you gotta realize this is going way back to the time before drones and things like that and so it was just that there were these gigantic eyes everywhere watching everything so every move anybody made at pretty much any time you know, you were being watched, constantly surve surveilled. And I don't know who was doing this, but it felt very ominous. And it felt like there was just no privacy. There, there was no such thing as privacy because everybody was constantly watched, constantly monitored. And again, this is going back into the mid 80s. And as drones have become popular, it's clicked with me that maybe what I was seeing was drones and the use of drones, but the use of drones to a degree where you're going to walk on a street and you're going to see a handful of them on every street. They're going to be hovering, you know, just like, you know, maybe 30 feet in the air um, and just monitoring intersections going. And if somebody is of note or interest, they'll follow you. As, as you know, they watch where you go from place to place, and they're everywhere. And we know there's cameras everywhere in our societies now. There's cameras, 
you know, pretty much at every stoplight. They're they're everywhere. And so everything is being watched all the time. And this was the first thing that hit me from those dreams. It was just the fact that there was zero privacy. This was complete big brother system. Yet I couldn't tell who was controlling these things. This little graph from the Wall Street Journal shows the level of concern about drones monitoring people's daily activities. And, uh, you know, we could see how the concern is is pretty concerned, especially when it comes to our home. We, we almost accept now, like when we're in the workplace, we're going to get monitored. We pretty much accept when we're out in public. Okay, we're going to be watched, you know. Um, if I pick my nose or scratch my butt, it's going to be on camera somewhere. Um, whatever happens, we're being watched. Um, but we don't want to be watched at home, which is something that is happening now, too. And it's only going to increase. But the dreams weren't just about that. The most ominous thing that I saw and every time they came back, and, and I've had them definitely four times, and I suspect I've seen them more um, over the years. One of the things that I see is there is so many lights in the sky. I'm looking up, and it's just past twilight getting dark, and I see the sky, and there is countless lights in the sky and I don't know if they're meteors I don't know if they're alien ships I'm not sure what they are but there is so many lights that you there's thousands of them visible in the sky and the thought that hits me is there's nowhere to run nowhere to hide there's just no escaping from whatever this is that's coming in and that's the initial thing I see is just so many lights. It just boggles the mind that you're just, everybody's in a stupor. Everybody is just walking around with their jaws wide open and eyes wide open and just kind of dazed looking at that, knowing that <coughs> there's so many of them, there's nowhere for you to go. It's just, uh, it's overwhelming. There's so many of them. And there's just too many to count. And it's just this sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach that is kind of like that I'm, when you're faced with something that you just can't believe and it's potentially so scary that you're just kind of in shock. And so every direction you look there's these lights you know they're everywhere and then I see the ocean and the sky I'm able to see the ocean as well as the sky and I see the lights in the sky and then I see in the ocean and in the ocean there are ships and I can make out that they are ships and some of them look like those giant eyes that are watching everybody and they're all coming towards the land. So they're not only in the sky, but they're also in the ocean. And they're also coming to the land from both above in the sky and from below in the ocean. And that, and I'm l be able to see right into the ocean in the dream all the way on down to the depths and it's all clear. And so I could see that there are countless amounts of them in the ocean, thousands of them in the ocean, thousands in the sky. And it's really a scary, scary feeling. And in these visions, they start to take form and, and they don't look like military aircraft. They don't look like, you know, uh, aircraft carriers and destroyers and, and, you know, battleships and military helicopters or you know MiGs or F-22s anything like that they they look more like UFOs more like saucers and a variety of other shapes and they seem to be kind of um, crystalline or um, shiny metallic uh, coming and there's again so many of them it's just boggling the mind and they're in the water they're in they're everywhere they're just everywhere 
and so it, then it hits me that it feels more like an alien invasion type thing and it feels extremely surreal and very very scary and this this dream has happened as I said at least four times that I can clearly remember and it seems to happen in pretty big intervals you know like seven to ten years and uh, it's um, very disconcerting and there's different details that come uh, in other parts of it though I do see troops and I see helicopters especially and I see parachutes being dropped so there's also troops uh, involved and they're dropping soldiers and there's you know military mobilization going on and it feels like the United States is being invaded and I could see them I could see the troops and I could feel that I'm in where I am it's warm and at that time the very first time I was living up in Connecticut and then once I had the dream in South Carolina that was the clearest and um, where I'm seeing the troops it's very warm it feels like it's somewhere in the southeastern United States yeah, where I currently am living um, and I can see them clearly being dropped from helicopters in mass and it's cloudy and there's like helicopters that pop into these big dark r you know rain clouds that you get down south and then pop out and different troops dropping down and people are running and people are you know becoming refugees and they're they're moving away from the coast and they're moving up especially from south florida because it feels like south florida is a place where troops have landed and not ours so here it feels like the united states is being invaded um the only thing that more the logical mind is saying is basically russia china um, and others um, are the ones doing it but i didn't see those troops but i i knew and kept hearing from people that they've landed you know down around miami and down around the everglades and they're moving on up and there's a huge refugee swell of people rushing away from that area and heading up northward trying to get up away from where the troops have landed and I also feel in those dreams there's troops coming uh, in from like Mexico as well as coming down from Alaska and Canada into the United States as well. And people are just in a panic and people are just running and becoming refugees and in mass. And I'm in there with them and I'm ca helping carry this older man who had two feet blown off from something some sort of explosion so he's missing his feet and I know we have to climb some steps and it's really hard getting them up the steps wherever we are and that was something that stuck with me and so it's uh, that part's always stuck with me and then at that point I remember hearing people say they're only 20 miles behind us and heading this way so it was a feeling of, well, you know, it's no way we're going to outrun them with this huge refugee population. And it's just a very, um, it was a very scary uh, thing and scary dream. So definitely felt that troops were coming in from Alaska, Canada, coming down. Definitely felt troops coming in from Mexico and from Florida. Um, and the first time I had this dream was before I did, like, research into all the prophecies of what's gonna happen like with Washington's vision um, I had read the Bible at that point already um, many times but I never really connected and thought about the fact that the United States could be Babylon the Great and while I'm not a total Bi Bible believer in the traditional sense I do think there's a lot of things in there a lot of things hidden and there's a, there's a lot of things that are, you know, just some things that you can't ignore. Um, so uh, when I read about Washington's vision, it hit me that 
wow, that was just like what I had dreamed about and have been dreaming about. Um, very, very similar. And then so many people have had these dreams. So many people have seen these things that it just feels like it's only a matter of time. And that may or may not be because I do believe we have the power to shift reality as we know from quantum physics it's the observer that creates the world basically it's it's all by observation and Buddha and his enlightenment his, it was all about realizing that this is Maya this world is Maya which Maya is the word that means illusion it's all really an illusion. We're living, as scientists now believe, in a computer simulation of sorts. A hologram, a reflection of a 2D reality that is actually much more real than this 3D reality. And so we could shift timelines, we could shift reality if enough people get together and really put their energy into it and their focus into it. And I think a lot of these visions are warnings that, you know, we have to wake up and realize, you know, that we've been manipulated and we were being manipulated and we are being manipulated so it will create one particular outcome that the negative forces that are guiding and steering the world want to happen. So we have to wake up and get out of that particular outcome. And it's like I've always known at some point it was going to be very dangerous living in the United States and at some point you'd need to leave that was the feeling of I've, I've had and then when 9-11 happened it made it feel just 10 times more and so I almost feel like it's amazing that we've gone this long without anything major happening but these dreams you know they've just been something that's been with me you know for the last uh, 32 years and um, it's it's something that comes back and I get a little bit more detail each time but I do believe in them and I do because I've kept track of my dreams since I was 12 years old writing them down in in dream journals and that's something that's a good practice for everybody to do because you will get insights and you will be amazed and in 2006, I believe it was, I was just felt compelled to go through one of my own old dream journals. And I was just thumbing through it. And then I came across this dream. And as I read the dream that I had written down, it really hit me because I could see this dream all of a sudden so clear. And it was a dream I had totally forgotten about, totally forgotten about that I had six years previous. And in that dream, I was standing inside a, a very, very big office building. And I saw something come and ram into the building and realized it was an airplane. And then it just caused this huge explosion. And I could see the flames billowing through the building. And then there was a second one that happened and a second impact. And then I recognized what the buildings were and that they were on fire and I wrote all this down in my dream journal but had totally totally forgotten about the dream until I was reading it again in 2006 so this is you know six years after I had the dream that I am you know reading about it and I had completely forgotten about this dream a hundred percent forgotten about it but then as I'm reading it, it became so vibrant like I was having it again and I could see clearly what it was. And clearly it was 9-11 with the World Trade Centers. And when I looked at the date of the dream, it was September 11th, 2000. It was exactly one year before it happened. And that blew my mind because I didn't remember having this dream until 2006 when I read it in my dream journal and so that made me realize wow that was a message <laughs> you know and 
if you've read anything about remote viewing, you know that this is very, very possible. The government employs people to do this. Um, I have definitely been a very strong intuitive empath all my life, and I've cultivated it through meditation since you know childhood. So we could all develop these these abilities. And I just wanted to share that with you, um, as well as the practice of writing down your dreams, because it could be a very, very powerful practice. So I wanted to share all this with you guys to let you know where I'm coming from so you understand me a little bit more. Um, I've had a ton of experiences all my life and other ones that I'll share with you uh, as time goes on. And experiences that leave you knowing things, not just conceptualizing and thinking, but, but knowing on a deep level. So I wanted to share that with you, you guys. Um, if you found it interesting, definitely thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and share. And there'll be more updates coming out, and I look forward to your comments. Please share with me what you guys have, have experienced, your dreams, your visions. What have you had premonitions of? Please um, feel free to share and so we can grow together as a family here at Evolutionary Energy Arts and continue to decipher all the mysteries that are around us. Thank you so very much. Take care.